Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> it's been a while, so we thought we'd start off with a little welcome back today. Man, I don't know about you and rural urban Hermitage Springs. <laughs> Did you watch a lot of Welcome Back Cotter I used to up? kill some Welcome Back Cotter, man. Whenever, remember, uh, Nick at Night had that like throwback there for a long time whenever we were little, man. I used to watch that all the time. I was a sweat hog, buddy. I used to watch What's Happening with Rerun and Raj. You remember that? I don't that? even know that. Mm, nah, well. I used to love Welcome Back Cotter. I'm pretty gangster, though. You know, I'm, I got you're, a lot of, yeah, got a lot of gangsta. roots. Mm-hmm. A lot of urban roots down in North Springs. And we watched a lot of... Y'all, lot of, y'all were pretty street down there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we watched a lot of What's Happening and Good Times and the Jeffersons and stuff like that. <laughs> the Jeffersons. Every now and then I got to watch Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just, I watched uh, Mary Tyler Moore, Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I did. Did you watch I Love Lucy? Oh, I used Be- to watch. I love I Love Lucy. Hey, what about some Get Smart? Don't even know about that. You didn't ever see that, I seen the movie. Yeah. Years the, ago. That show from the 70s was a lot better than that movie was. So what was your favorite show growing up? I mean, the absolute favorite growing up. Probably Salute Your Shorts. <laughs> Salute Your Shorts. <laughs> oh, man. That was, that was, that, wasn't there a dude... Dude Ranch or something too that Yeah, the Dude Ranch. Probably Ren and Stimpy. Something like that. Man. You ever watch Beavis and Butthead and you oh, sense out yeah. of it? Yeah, I used to love Beavis and Butthead. That was a little later though. Well, we were like ten when it came. I was ten when it came out, I think. Yeah, it lasted forever too. You know, I never wa- I never watched it until a friend of the show, Nick Grace. Uh, he said something about it one day on a bus we was somewhere and he said you don't watch Beavis and Butthead? He wasn't even talking to me. This was just yeah. me being a little kid over listening to some yeah. conversation. I didn't have any sense in being in. And he said, you don't watch Beavis and Butthead? I've watched every one of them twice. And I thought, yeah. i got to watch them. Yeah. I, if I'm going to be cool and be in high school, i got to watch some Beavis and Butthead. Started watching it right then. We were in seventh grade when Nick graduated. So I yeah. say that was, uh, you know, and they were god awful to watch when they come back in like 2009 or Oof. 10 somewhere. Ooh, it was bad. Boy, you can't go back and watch anything, can you? I mean, <laughs> that stuff, old stuff just don't hold not, up, man. Well, not something that was so dumb as Beavis yeah. and Butthead was, really. <laughs> uh, remember that? Uh, remember that show, Doug? Yeah. Oh, I tried to watch one of them. That was rough. Bad. Yeah. Well, we were kids. I mean, but that's true. You know what really holds up? I was uh, Ren and Stimpy for some reason. I never was a Ren and Stimpy fan, man. You know who was my uh, my Jack Cropper, which is my my he he was my he's my grandmother's husband. He's the only oh. grandpa on that side I've ever known. Um, but the uh, me and him used to watch Ren and Stimpy together. He always liked it. He just loves kids, you know. He always liked it because I always thought it was funny. But you yeah. know, me and him used to watch it together. Yeah, I never got into that one for some reason. I watched a lot of movies too. I was a big movie guy. I, I'll tell you what, I, uh, Robin Hood, yeah. the one with the fox and the bear and all that stuff. I'd watch that all the time. I, I'd watch that right now. I, I, yeah, and I'm I'm real bad to not watch movies until like, especially like older on in life. Like I won't go to the theaters. Very very rare I go to yeah. theaters, and then like it's like two years later. It seems like. When everybody else already watches, already won Academy Awards. <laughs> yeah, when you finally see it. Yeah. I tell you what, I went and watched it the movies. The Revenant. Did you go see that? Mm-mm, I don't even, never even heard of it. Leonardo DiCaprio. He was the Revenant. Uh, he was uh, spoiler alert for who's ever uh, hasn't watched the Revenant yet. You need to go watch that. Um, he was a uh, travel. Uh, he was a guide back old long time ago. I mean, they were out on horses, you know, mm-hmm. fur trading and stuff, getting attacked by Indians, whatever. And he was a guide for some fur trappers, and uh, he had a son that was a half Indian son. Yeah. And uh, anyway, his one of, his boy got hurt, and he wound up getting killed. He got hurt. He got attacked by a bear. This was the best scene I've ever seen in a movie. It looked like he got attacked by a bear. I thought Leonardo DiCaprio's dead. You know, it looked like he got sh- sh- shook around by a pit bull. This was surreal. Anyway, long story short, there's a really good movie. He rode a horse off the side of a hill. And I'm, I tried to get out of my chair. I thought I was riding off a hill on that horse with him. You can't kill the wolf on Wall Street. Oh, man, that's a good movie. You can't kill If he don't die off all the stuff he does in the wolf <laughs> on Wall Street, he's not going to die falling off a cliff on a horse. Yeah, that was, a, that was such a good movie, too. I'm like the worst. Like I do. Here's where I'm at with movies. I don't watch a lot of dramas. Mm-hmm. I don't watch a lot of even action movies. I really don't watch horrors. And it's not because I'm scared of them. I am. 
Uh, you're scared of? I am. My sister always, she uh, terrified me when I was little with, with horror movies. Mm-hmm. She was a big horror person. Yeah. Which makes no sense at all because I remember her at a certain point, like when she was 16, 17, living at the house. She got home at night. If it was dark, she would haul ass through the from the driveway to the porch. <laughs> just trying you know, to get miles. Yeah, she was so scared, but she'd watch horror movies. And uh-huh. I, uh, I'm just I'm just of the belief that um, life is serious enough. Mm-hmm. So if I'm going to watch a movie, it's probably going to be a comedy most of the time. And and they don't even make horror movies anymore. All they make is like gory. Like, tell me, The Hills Have Eyes is a horror movie. Oh yeah, like it's a straight up rape scene murder. You know what? It's not. A, there's nothing horrible. You know. I watched one Jason movie. At Patrick Jerry's house, had nightmares about it. Uh, everybody got into watching horror movies there for a while, and I watched uh, Freddy. I watched one Freddy movie. Yeah, uh, I watched dumbest things ever. Oh yeah, and I watched one Chucky movie. Yeah, I thought this ain't for me. I don't want to watch this. I don't, <laughs> I don't like this. That none of them make a lick of sense. But well, just- there's one that's out right now that they say is not a not a horror movie. And I seen Lee Butcher. I'm going to watch it uh, on Facebook. Don't breathe. Have you seen that one? No. There's a. I don't know the. I've not watched the movie, but I I kind of want to watch it, and it's it's a thriller more than it is a um, okay anything else. And it somehow or another, some old blind man gets uh, gets some money in it, and these kids decide that they're gonna break into his house and jack his money. But apparently, mm-hmm. this old blind man's an ex uh, military guy and just <laughs> ruins their lives, you know, in the movie. So that I, I kind of want to see it. Yeah, I can handle a thriller, like I said. Yeah. I, I just don't. Want, I don't want to see him make gory and he just. Murder, let's murder people for yeah. the sake of murdering people. Uh, I can't lie to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dream about it. I'm going to have nightmares about it. Yeah. I'm going I'm to kid. I'm, I'm just, I just. Well, can't handle it. Yeah, well, you can't sleep if you're watching Freddy movies anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I used yeah. to have that creepy song in my head. One, two, Freddy. Oh, you would yeah. keep singing it so you're just no, r- to ruin you your do. night. I'm, I'm, I'm the same with scary movies and with snakes. I just If yeah. I see one or two of them, I'll start. Now, I quote you some Will Ferrell and some Chris, <laughs> Chris Tucker and uh, we all went through the little stage in high school. It was like all the movies were cool. It was like Friday, next Friday, Money Talks. Um, I'm a big Major League fan. I love the Major League movies. I uh, like the first of all of those movies. Yeah. Well, what I liked about the next Friday was is that Day Day didn't try to be like Smokey. He was his own complete mm-hmm. moron. You know, he mm-hmm. wasn't the fast talking. Damn. Mm-hmm. He was always just, he stuttered, and mm-hmm. so he made it his own character. Uh, I love the first Friday. But like Friday after next and or Friday too, right? Yeah, I didn't like that. I like next Friday. I don't remember much about the third one. Yeah, at all. Yeah, next Friday is the first one. Yeah. Then Friday after next. I didn't. I'll like tell that. you, but I love. I was an Adam Sandler fan. I was Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison. You talking about going back and watching stuff? I cannot watch Billy Madison for the life of me to go back. It's the dumbest. I thought that was the best movie ever, and I, and I caught it on TV yeah. the other day. I don't know if it was the. I don't know if it was the pauses for commercials or what it was. It has nothing God, to do it was it. awful. No, it's terrible now. I remember watching, I think it was Van Eric, we were watching it. We were like fifth, sixth grade. Mm-hmm. It was the greatest thing ever. Like ever. I said, it's that sophomore comedy that's not as funny when you, 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 you now a Happy Gilmore, I'll watch Gold Jacket, Green Jacket, who gives, <laughs> who gives a shit, a shit? <laughs> all the time. I'll watch that every day of the week if it's on. Yeah. Same with, uh, let's see, I love Varsity Blues. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll watch that anytime it's on TV. Yeah. Uh, and I've gotten more into like the, the you know what? Uh, just while you're talking about Varsity Blues, I don't mean to cut you off there. They, uh, Billy Bob has lost like 200 pounds. Well, he lost it. He's he lost more now because he's dead. He died. Oh about man, yeah. no kidding. He died like month, two months ago, maybe. <laughs> he didn't get on that meth. Your pounds away died, did he? Is <laughs> well, that so he lost 200 pounds. I don't, I don't know. I didn't ever mm. look into it. I just remember. Well, <laughs> well never mind then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yep. Um, he was doing great until was doing really good. Doing, doing great on that diet. I yeah, guess. doing really good on that diet. diet. Huh. Um. Well, on a guy that's not dead, Will Ferrell. Yeah, uh, I can watch a Will Ferrell movie. A lot of people don't like time. Will Ferrell movies. I will watch Step Brothers over and over and over. I will drop that mother. <laughs> whenever, whenever John C. Riley goes up and shows him the uh, uh, his drums and then yells yeah. at him, "Don't touch it!" Oh, like, yeah, it gets it. Man, I know it's coming. I can watch that every day. <laughs> that and I'm a big wedding crasher. Vince Vaughn is yeah, awesome. Vince, Vince Vaughn, Vaughn, I love that guy. old school. Oh, I mean, I could. I'm the worst about quoting these movies. I've seen these movies 15 times a piece, and I, I'm so bad about quoting them, but I can remember a certain quote every now and then. Right. You know? But I, I, there's one guy at work, he can just like, he'll come off, he's like, you remember that part of the movie? And he'll like, boom, boom, boom. Like, man, it's awesome if you can remember that. But <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not good with quotes. I just remember funny good. parts. I'm, yeah. 
Uh, I tell you who I hate is a comedian, and I mean he's universally regarded as one of the best. Twenty million, you know, per picture. But I, I, I can't stand Jim Carrey. Oh no, no, he's he his political views have kind of just eat him up over the last few years. Boy, he did some weird stuff with uh, who's that redheaded girl he got so obsessed with her for a little while. Real smoky voice. She was in uh, Zombie Land. I don't know, but he had before you say anything about it, he had a fiance kill herself not too long ago. So I hope mm. it wasn't her. No, it wasn't her. Uh, he was with Jenny McCarthy, however the hell that happened for yeah. a while. She's borderline I, idiotic like him. I used to love Jim Carrey, man. Uh, liar, liar. Yeah, I, I like Liar, liar. And liar, liar was a good movie. The first Ace Ventura. Well, actually, both Ace Ventura movies. I always like both Ace Ventura movies. I'm borderline on those. He, but but that's say. the last thing I've seen him in that I, I liked. He is uh, an odd cat. I like Dumb and Dumber just because. I liked the first Dumb and Dumber. It was really good. Did you see Dumb and Dumber 2? I tried to. I, I didn't it was it. so bad. Yeah, I didn't make he, it all they were, through it. If you try to remake a movie, yeah, it's no good. No. I agree. I just, I just think he's got a. He's got such it's a, just a stupid comedy to me. He's got such a. Uh, Says the guy in the basement. Yeah, talking about a millionaire. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, exactly right. I mean, you, if you have got money, you can be weird as you want to be. But he's, I mean, he's so liberal, and I'm, I'm not against being liberal with your ideas, but he is, I mean, way out there liberal side. Those liberals have a way of striking the nerve with folks, for sure. Well, you know, some folks. For you know, sure. the uh, thing about thing about that is, is that that side's got so their whole thing was originally was be let everybody be what they are, right? Now they've got to the point where it's you know if you're not like us, then you're against us. You know, that's I don't know. They changed their changed their message pretty hard for some reason. I don't. Well, that's the way, if you hadn't noticed the way the America we're getting to live in, if you're not pro everything that's going on, you're the outcast. Yeah, if you don't understand something or you don't hardly, if you don't believe in it the way that everybody else thinks you should believe in it, then somehow you're a Nazi. I don't know. I don't yeah. quite get that. I'm about sick and tired of just because I don't Done believe the it. same way you believe yeah. that we're the... Yeah. We're, we're the... Hey, you know what I'm, my belief in it is? Is you do you, let me do me, and I don't have to like you, and you don't have to like me. Yeah. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it did. This poet didn't even know it. Uh, hello. They said, nah, I'm just, you know, it's it's a, it's a scary world not to be too oh, serious yeah. about what we're going to raise our kids in. Mm-hmm. Is that, hey, and, you know, because I'll be the first one to say, man, we hadn't talked about stuff like this, but I don't care if nine out of ten people listen to this podcast, yay. Oh, yeah. Don't care. I, don't I really care. don't. I'm pretty laid back, dude, about this stuff. Yeah. I don't care. But do not tell me that that's what this world has to be. I I, you, I have to accept it. or It's just like they're putting it down your throat. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> and I yeah. Just, I, I, you, go do whatever you want to yeah, do. Yeah, man. Just don't tell me. Don't, don't <laughs> tell me I have to agree with it. I, and that's I mean, the way it's getting, man. It's like it's ever. You it's, don't have to agree with. Anything that I do, and I could not care less whether somebody agrees with anything I do. Yeah, go do you, but hey, don't blast it out. To, yeah, what, it's not if you want to. If you feel like you need to put your message out there, put your message out there, but don't chastise people yeah. for not agreeing with it. And at the same time, you know, I also get frustrated the people that are so close minded they don't even give it a chance. Yeah, but I, but I'm of the belief that it doesn't have to be just you know, blasted all over my nose. And I blame that on the, the, the media more so than anything. And the media is so... Yeah, the media is so uh, liberal. Uh, it's... it's um, they're, I get what they're doing. If I owned a radio station or a news TV company. station or a news company or whatever, I would want whatever my message was to get out there. But, I mean, what happened... What happened to the news media trying to be unbiased and, yeah, you know, bipartisan? You know, it, that's not happening anymore that... I cannot stand both ways. Both ways. I can't stand to watch Fox News because oh God, they're the be- they're the uh, worst. Well, I don't think they're the worst, you know, because I've got more of a lean towards the way they go. But they, uh, they're just way out there, man. And then uh, MSN and CNN and all those, they've got their slant too. And you know, just it's ridiculous. I can't, I can't hardly get down with being so hard to one side. I mean. The thing is with life is those people are different. Well, and you know, and that's kind of brings us to a point we're at right now with Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. It's, it's what's going on with him. With yeah, the, you know. Not standing for the national anthem in his football game. 
he is I, I get what he's trying to do. He's trying to use his celebrity for something that he believes in. Believes in. I don't I don't Hey, Jack, go do it. You know, do your thing. But the, he's doing it wrong, I think. It, he's well, just Absolutely. You know, you don't you still live here. I mean, that standing for the national anthems about some national pride and if you if you don't like the way some stuff's going in the world, I completely agree with it, but the you know, you still got to stand for yeah. stand for the national anthem because that's still actually what you're fighting for. You know, even even with that you're trying to make this statement. You're still trying to fight for your idea of what this uh, nation is supposed to be, you know, and, and that's showing your nationalistic pride, even though you don't agree with what's going on in the nation right now is, I mean, that, that shows even, that would be even more beneficial than doing what he's doing. I, I don't know. I don't well, you know, and that is, I, I don't get it from the American flag standpoint. Okay. He wore, he, he wore socks in training camp that depicted, it was that like had pigs, pigs on it right? for, Okay, so you're, so you're, and that's that's something we could talk about all day long. But you know, I, I can remember this happening one other time. Well, I'm sure it's happened other times. But when we were younger, probably ten, eleven years old, I remember uh, a guy named Chris Jackson who was a star guard from LSU, got drafted by Denver Nuggets. He changed his uh changed over to Islam, uh-huh. changed his name to Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, and he refused to to stand because of his Islamic beliefs. Okay, it's not even that. With I mean, like you, like you said with Kaepernick, he's still living yeah. in the United States of America, employed. And I just I with the thing about the cops, dude, I am so over this. And it's it's okay, first off, let's say this. For me to wrap my mind around the fact that it's twenty sixteen and we're still talking about racism. It's crazy. Either direction. Right. Because let's be honest here. Uh neither you or I neither are racist people. No. Not even and we're not one of those people that say, Oh, well, you know, well, I got a black brand or Yeah, what? right. right. Uh, man, yeah. this is getting so out of hand as far as like, you know, Everybody's getting killed. Yeah, it's not just black people. Are there are there bad cops out there? The, for yes. sure, call those guys out. But yeah, I mean, don't don't beat up on every single cop. Do you think there's not white people getting killed by black cops? Oh yeah. Or or is there you know white cops killing you know, white people? Yeah, I mean, it, it ha- doesn't get the same. And, and I tell you, the problem it goes back to what we were just talking about is this news media. The the media put such a slant on everything that they just try and they're, they're just looking for that thing to put them over. And the, you know, that's the thing of the minute, you know, and I, unfortunately I hate, yeah. the, I, I hate that they're the news media is making this racism worse. And I, I'm, I'm not saying it's not out there. Uh, obviously racism's out there. It's yeah. it's still alive and well in 2016, and, unfortunately. And growing up in a rural community like we have, we, we've been, um, We've been around it. We've exposed been exposed to, to it. it. Yeah. Um, but I will say this. It bugs me in both directions. It bugs me to have your redneck out here mm-hmm. in 2016 yep. still dropping in bombs because that's the way. Well, it's the ignorance of it because that's how yep. they were raised. That's yep. a, my daddy don't like, you know, hey, yeah. you've got to stop. Yeah, you've the, got to. But at the same time, the black people over here hating like all white people because something happened. Yeah. You know, and. You it, know, I just. In 2016, my beliefs have evolved to the point where I just love people. Yeah. I want everybody to love everybody. I wish, I wish everybody would just start getting along. You know, it's, it's to the point now where we don't need, there's no, there's no need for racism. Now, is there, is, is that going to change anything? No, me saying that's not going to change anything, but no. there's, I, I don't even understand it. I don't, I don't know where, you know, yeah. I just don't know where it come from. Or I do know where it comes from, obviously, but I don't know why it's still here. You know, I, yeah, and it's just it's the fact that like, um, okay, we weren't around a lot of black people growing up, right. honestly, down here, honestly. You know? right. But it's it's to the point where like a friend of mine at work, good friend of mine, mm-hmm. black guy. But you know what? He he's he's just a friend. Right. If, if I'm talking, and this is what drives me crazy with a lot of white people, mm-hmm. they'll say, "Oh, you know, so and so, my black friend." Yeah. Okay. If I talked about my friend, and we'll, I mean, yeah, what does it, what even does it matter? Right. And his name, well, well, his name's Jerry. Okay, right. we'll say um, you wouldn't know that he was a black guy until you met him, right? Because it's irrelevant. It, it it's he, so irrelevant. He's my friend. Like I say, my friend Jerry. He's mm. not Jerry. My my black friend. My black friend Jerry. Right. You know. And he even said that one time. I was talking about a dude one time. He said, "That's what I like about you." He said, "Because I would have never knew he was black, dude." I was talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, I think when I worked at Wooly Bullies, I was talking about Amanda's uh, 
husband Ricky. Ricky, yeah. He goes, oh, he's a brother. He said, <laughs> right. he said I never would have knew because you didn't say. Right. Because well, it I mean, doesn't matter. What does it matter? I it mean, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. You know, I, but at the same time, I get so frustrated when I see media and when I, and I've got friends that are, that are um, black people on Facebook and they kind of go on these rants mm-hmm. about this Black Lives Matter stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, like, you know, I can only imagine if it was white people making this big fuss. Yeah, and, you know, and and these stations like BET. Yeah, I mean, you people know, would flip their lid if we had a station dedicated just to white people. Yeah, the same point. You know? Same point, you know. But the uh, the thing about BET to me is that that has been that's been a staple. That, that's been a staple. Not only that, but it it's given it's given a voice to to this. Uh, it's giving a voice to this problem, you know, and, and so it actually has done a lot for the cause, you know, and, and to bring out the, you know, the highlight racism and, you know, what have you. But the, I don't know, I'm just, th- this may not be a good opinion for everybody else, but I'm just at the point where I, I just want everybody to be happy. I don't care what color your skin is. I just yeah. like people. I just want people to get along. This thing that, uh, you know, with, us highlighting it on the news isn't helping anything. Right. You know, that that that's making things worse. Obviously, race relations in the United States have fallen apart over the last you know, eight, four, eight years, 12, 15 years. You know, it's getting worse. It ain't getting better. And uh, so I don't know. You know, I'm, I just want everybody to be happy. You know, I yeah. think you ought to, everybody ought to start preaching love instead of preaching race. I just, I just don't feel like there's any room for it. I feel like, you know, I, but. At the same time, I feel like there's that double standard there, like I said about the BET thing. As far as that, mm-hmm. I mean, that's 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 kind of got to, you know, we got to cut on. The, hey, think about comedians. You know, obviously, I grew up watching stand-up comedy. Mm-hmm. I prefer black comedy over white comedy. I just do. Uh, I was, and you know, and let me tell you why. Because it's funnier. It is They're, funnier. It's, it's more open. I it's think. a lot more open. They they'll say whatever's on there. Yeah, that's what I'm getting to though. And it, it, it's the double standard that kills me sometimes. Uh-huh. And I, uh, like, again, I don't want to think that this is, I mean, this is just how it is. Mm-hmm. A black comedian can get up there and say, cracker this, hillbilly this, honky this. Mm-hmm. And it's cool. We laugh. As white people, we laugh. I'm yeah. not offended by it. I don't care. It's yeah. part of a comedy act. Yeah. But if you and I went up there and started Drop, dropping in bombs, you know, that's our career's over. Oh, yeah. But, the, you know, the, uh, on that same note, though, the, uh, you know what everybody brings up is white privilege at this point in time. Yeah. So they'll say that we, the reason that we're not offended is because we have white privilege. I, I don't even know, I don't even understand. Yeah, I don't know what that means really. You know, the, I'm not a, I'm not offended by something because it's white privilege. How is it? How is my willingness to let somebody make a joke? White privilege. Yeah. You know, I don't. I don't quite get that. Well, you know, I learned a lot of things from my mom and dad. And one thing my mom always said, there is there is good pe- white people and there's bad white people and there's good black people and there's bad black people. Yeah. I was never raised to believe, you know, be racist. Be bigoted or racist. Or at all. Yeah. About anything. And at the same token, you know, I think other people need to stop biting into this media. The media is just pushing it to a fact that, like, I mean, this is look start looking like what we read about in the fifties and sixties. How that's to, exactly right. I mean, that they're pushing it. I mean, everything old's new again. They're pushing it back to the fifties. I mean, that, yeah, they need to. I don't know, man. That this is a crazy world, and you know, you kid on something a while ago, bringing a kid into this. It's boy, it scares yeah. you. Yeah, but I'm with you, man. I, I don't care what color you are. If you're good to me, I'm gonna be good to you. And yeah. it's just, like I said, I get frustrated, and I, I don't want to come off like thinking that I, I'm people are going to listen to me like, man, he's really. Talking about this double standard thing, it, it exists. Yeah, but, it but really also, does. but it also, if you're a white person in 2016 dropping in bombs, I ain't got no time for you. Yeah, you know what I'm get, saying? Just get over that. You know, the, uh, I'm, a, I'm an equal opportunity. Offender, I don't like yeah. you. If I, I, there's black people I don't like, and there's white people I don't like. Oh, yeah. But I, there, there's black people I love. And yeah. I like Shaquille O'Neal better than my whole family, homo. Yeah, and you know, and it does, <laughs> none of it has anything to do with the color of their skin. Nothing, man. Yeah. So, Colin Kaepernick, so. As much as I'm wrapped around the fact that racism is being talked about, is the fact that Colin Kaepernick, I know primarily as an NFL football player. Mm-hmm. My problem with Colin, Colin Kaepernick is, God, just do something relevant on the football field. Blaine Gabbert is one of the worst football players I've ever seen in my life, and, and Colin can't beat him out to be a starter. Okay. He hasn't done anything relevant in three years. I'm like, okay, well. Well, <clears throat> Colin Kaepernick's taking advantage of the fact that he's uh, – 
his ass was on the chopping block. I mean, he was. Yeah. He needed some. He needed something to help him out, and he's he found it. You know, he it would be really hard for the them to cut yeah. him right now. You know, it uh, without him hollering racism about it. But they yeah. Uh, and he was raised by an all white family, which is cool. Well, yeah, that and you know he's so he's oppressed. Yeah. Well, not only that, he lives in like a nineteen million dollar house too. You know, he's, and, he, and he and he makes nineteen million a year as a backup quarterback. Yeah. I'm just. I'm sorry if I'm having a hard time feeling sorry for Colin Kaepernick about yeah. this situation, I, but but if he truly feels this way and it's not just a publicity stunt, then hey, do do what you got to do. But I, I just feel like standing for a flag is kind of bullshit. Yeah, I mean, but, it's I think you're confusing the message here. Uh, but the one doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the other one. I, you know, I I think he should have thought that one through a little bit better. There's obviously something he could have done. He could have threw his celebrity name at all kinds of all kinds of organizations that would have loved to have had him. Well, he gives some sort of, now, before we get too hard on him, he gives some sort of donation to... Oh, yeah, he gave a million dollars to somebody. Yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, that was after he started taking all this crap for it. You fact, know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we'll see. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I feel a lot stronger about the other stuff we were talking about, about yeah. the racism still existing than whatever the hell Colin Kaepernick feels butthurt about, yeah. honestly, because... Yeah, I think... Uh, th- those guys are there to play football, in my, you know, so... Yeah. Not that you, not that he can't be a modern day Jim Brown activist if that's what if he, that's what he's wanting to get after, go after it. But I mean, I think it was a little snatch and grab opportunity there for yeah. for whatever reason. That may be the only reason he's on the roster today. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. Well, so, uh, while we're on football, what about our uh, UT Vols playing Appalachian State the other night? Just uh, about got beat. Is Appalachian State they're ranked? And well, and that's what I was about to say. A lot of people that are non UT fans are really giving them people the the what for because in god almighty everybody that listens to this show is a ut fans guilty of it yeah oh it's our year yeah oh, it's yeah. our year it's supposed this to be is it. it right get it right so and all the people on espn and everybody that now, was announcing that thing it was all yeah. talking about how it's gonna be ut's year so well that's the thing uh, prior years it was just ut saying it but now you've got all these analysts saying they're gonna win the sec east they've, they've got a legit chance to be in the final four of the championship games uh-huh. you know because they've got, you know, two great uh, running backs and Kamara and Hurd. They've got Dobbs who's, you know, throwing that thing, you know, can, cannot throw is the problem, but he's a hell of an athlete. Then they've got all the defense guys going on, uh, you know, and Aaron Barry, you know, I mean, they're loaded. Yeah. But so, Appalachian State's ranked above some SEC teams, aren't they? Well, I don't remember where they were ranked, but I just know that, I mean, they pulled off upset last year. Uh huh. And, they're a little bit better than just the old. They're, they weren't playing Tennessee Tech like everybody was like, oh, hell, Appalachian yeah. State. I mean, they, they had some, some good defenders now. Yeah. They had some good defense. I mean, yeah, UT pulled away, but as you see over the weekend with upsets to some of the other bigger name schools, Oklahoma, a uh, prime example of that. I mean, it's college football, and there's upsets every single weekend. Yeah. I mean, they don't just happen right there in the bowl games at the end of the year. I mean, they're happening yeah. all the time. Yeah. So, I mean – is the hot meter just a little bit much on Tennessee? Maybe. I, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe a little it was, bit. Right? But I think people need to give credit to App- Appalachian State. But yeah. I mean, it's one game. We'll, we'll come out. They, they'll have the Battle of Bristol mm-hmm. this Saturday night. Uh, it's supposed to be the biggest game. 160,000 people. Shoo. Had a chance to go to it. Yeah, uh, I did too. I had the opportunity to go. Through, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. Uh, our friend Don has able, been able to get – 12 to 18 tickets, something crazy. He's a doctor. My mm-hmm. friend Don's a, do- a doctor in Bristol. And I was like, are you scalping tickets now? For God's <laughs> sake. It's like nobody can get tickets to this. You've got like – All of them. You know, he's got a sign out in Bristol that says, I need tickets. He's, <laughs> yeah. got, a, he's got a trapper cap- trapper keeper full of them. <laughs> you know, I, I thought it had been a good time to win, but we just got something going going on you already. Yeah. Well, Jace had asked me um, – Yeah, he called me last week. Because man. I know Brad had wanted to go. Our friend Brad Craggett had wanted to go and – First, they had four tickets, uh-huh. and I was thinking, well, I could ask Brad and Becky since they were, they're pretty big UT fans. And then it only had three, so Don was asked. He said, "Do you want to ask you, Brad, Lucas, uh-huh. whoever you want to ask?" Then Jace got all excited. You know, Jace gets he gets he gets a little, a little <laughs> worked up and he excited. gets worked up. He goes, "You mean call Lucas?" And me ask him. I was like, "Oh, let's, let me make sure my wife does not want to go <laughs> right. before I get in trouble on this." Uh-huh. And I just couldn't. Uh, I, man, I, I thought about it, and I thought about it, and that's a really busy weekend because I've got concert tickets for Friday night, and I've got you know the Titans home opener, which is a bigger deal to me because mm-hmm. I'm a Titans fan. Um, that's just a lot going on in one weekend than 
Dude, I just couldn't justify because they were paying. They were asking face value for the ticket. Mm-hmm. A lot of time you drive up there, and I couldn't imagine how awesome that tailgating experience would be all day. Oh long. yeah, that's what I wanted to go for. Well, I'm telling you what, people in that speedway, Ooh. Bristol Motor Speedway, they'll know how to, they'll know how to tailgate. Oh yeah, yeah. You do a bunch of NASCAR <laughs> fans are just in there blowing that thing up. They didn't, the game's not till eight. Can you imagine how tired and <sighs> Boy, get there at Lit, 12. You might be. <laughs> get there at 12 and be tailgating until 8. You'd be game over. Done. Yeah. What about the time it gets started? So It'd be a good time, though, but I'm not about to take a pregnant woman up there. No. Three and a half hours worth of driving and sit out there and make her sit out in the parking lot all day and then try to go watch a football game. Mm-hmm. Now, she'd love it, but, you know, she'd love going to the, uh, watch UT. I mean, she's UT fanatic, but well, the, uh, what? As we you already got... had plans for the weekend anyway. Well, and... Maybe if I didn't have the other two things going on, yeah. I don't have t- I don't have tickets to the Titans yet, but I'm sure, sure you'll I'll, wind up with them. If if not, no big deal. But um, I'm all about experiences, you know. Yeah, I've been to NBA games, NFL games, uh, NHL. I've been to a Preds just because because. Oh, that's the most I went. To, I've never been to an NBA game. But that Predators, if you get a chance to go watch Predators, yeah. y'all need to go do that. I mean, hell, I went to NASCAR. You know how many NASCAR races I've watched in my life? That the two that to. I went to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I care less about NASCAR. Yeah. and But I've went to them. Just, you know, I've been to Bonnaroo, and I've been to all these things. So saying you've been to the biggest college football game in history, mm-hmm. it's pretty cool to say. Yeah. But, man, I just – I'll leave all the tailgating to Jason, those, that, that fraggly bunch, yeah. Billy and Scotty and D. Rich and all them boys will hold it down. and yeah. It'd been something good to talk about on the podcast next week. But. Yeah, y'all just all come on and tell us about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, D- Jace, I'm sure he won't over exaggerate <laughs> on how awesome it was. Well, I'm glad you finally broke him out and got him talking. We might get him up here and get him actually on the microphone. He, uh, yeah, he, I mean that, that if that'd be the time to do it, I'd say. Yeah. So, I, um, it'd, it'd be a good time. It, but I just I, I ain't I ain't. Well, I, I'm not a super big sports fan anyway. So, 160 thousand people that. It's a lot. That's a lot of people. A lot of people to have to deal with. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, you know, so. Sit beside well, that one guy painted in all orange and white. Yeah. You know, I just, that'd be the guy I had to sit beside of. Come on, Kamara. Come yeah. on. Come on. Calling them by their first name because they're yeah. tighter in vice grip. You know? Oh, all the time. Just going. You do better than that, Alvin. Come on. Like they know it. I uh, couldn't do it. My cousin Brianna called me out on that. She texted me. She's like, I love how you, uh, we used to make fun of my mom all the time when we was watching basketball games. Yeah. When I was at home, she's like. Oh, come on, Robert. Pass the ball down. Shaquille, he's wide open. Because, <laughs> I mean, you call him Shaq and Kobe. Right. And she's, I mean, Kobe, and Sha- that's different. But she'd say, like say if it was Derek Fisher, Rick Fox, Robert Ory. Oh, come on, Robert. you got to hit them. You know, <laughs> you, and Rock, you and Rick's killing them tonight. You know, so, so she texts me after the Mike Keith interview. She's like, I'm glad to see that you've uh, picked something up for your mom. <laughs> and I was like, why? She's like, Steve and Eddie. <laughs> I guess I called him Steve and Eddie the entire interview with right. Mikey. So, uh, well, I mean, he'd have been on a first name basis. Well, so he didn't. He didn't know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, speaking of the Titans, uh, coming off our college football talk, there, the Titans have finally they've trimmed their roster down to uh, official 53 man roster now over the so weekend. It's done. What you see today should be what they bring on the field Sunday evening. Well, what was the big upset? Who so got cut? That nobody seen coming. Okay. Well, uh, I tell you, the one that hurt me the most was my boy DeAndre's mount got cut. The one I've talked to you yeah. about that I kind of made friends with a little bit. I say uh-huh. made friends with. I mean, we're cool when we see each other, you know. Right. And he was slated to come on our podcast after the training camp. Uh-huh. I would imagine he still got time to do that. He didn't. <laughs> it get... was like we can still bring him on now. Yeah, he. Uh, yeah, he got cut, man. Which is really surprised. But what they're doing is they've trimmed down. Uh, basically, if you got drafted by the last regime, mm-hmm. you're walking on pins and needles. Yeah, they they drafted nine draft picks last year. I think there are two, two of the three are there. Whew. Uh, well, them two from last year's draft. Them two or three probably just, just playing as hard as they can. Well, right Marcus now. Mario was one. I think he's safe. <laughs> right. But the other two, uh, I can't remember the other. I have to look at the roster. I, I get confused. But uh, um, yeah, they've drafted. They've cut all their second round draft picks. So D Mountain got cut, and I, I hate to see that. Like I said, because he was one I could text, and like, he got our field passes for us for the last practice, and uh-huh. it's really cool for you know for to have that. Access and he's just a really really nice guy, man. He so, just, so what does he do now? I mean, well, he's he's just looking for hoping looking for a place to land. Right, thirty one other teams might pick the phone up. I was hoping he'd end up in their practice squad if they clear waivers and nobody else gives them. Titans can sign him back to their practice squad, mm-hmm. which they did. Some of the guys they cut, he wasn't on that list. And 
basically, you know, he was like a third linebacker last year. He he was the first and second guy off the bench behind some really talented linebackers for the Titans. He gets cut or, you know, um, they draft another guy, sign two free agents. Mm. And they have another unsigned guy comes in and presses. So he just kind of got, you know, Pushed out. if if a guy doesn't draft you, don't sign you, you're not, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If, if, if a guy didn't bring you in, then you're, you're behind the eight ball from the start. And he's coming off a of knee surgery, so he – he just kind of got shot on that one. But well, how old is he, though? Oh, he's second year, so he's probably 23. So he's 24. still got plenty of time. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's got time to get So did, up. is he technically a free agent now? He's a free agent. Uh, Justin Hunter was actually the, probably the biggest splash. It's not a surprise because he was pretty much fighting for his spot from day one with John Robinson coming into town. Mm-hmm. He's just probably the most athletic guy, six foot four, 210 pounds, jump out of the gym, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hadn't lived up to his potential. Mm-hmm. Gets injured every year. Just shows flashes just enough to really frustrate you as a Titans fan. Right. And John Robinson ain't playing that. Mm-hmm. You know, he's just on all the just, time. Just do it. And so he got cut. Bishop Sankey got cut. Who was a under underachieving second round pick two years ago, running mm-hmm. back. So those guys, uh, Justin Hunter, immediately got picked up by the Dolphins. Mm. Um, so he'll have a, a chance there. Bishop Sankey got signed to the Patriots practice squad. So mm-hmm. so it doesn't it don't guarantee him he'll. You know, if somebody gets injured during the year, they can pull him up from the practice squad. But other than that, there wasn't, you know, just just some basic names that got cut that people were expecting the entire time. That was probably the two, two or three of the biggest ones, more surprising. And uh, what about around the league? I don't think there was anybody really any real big names mm-hmm. of note. You know, that would be worth talking about here. Right. You know, uh, Titans brought back a guy actually that got cut by the Bears. He was a punt returner. And wide receiver Mark Mariani, he actually played here. Mm-hmm. Got drafted here in 2010. Had a real good rookie year. Made the Pro Bowl, but then he had really bad knee problems. It was a you know big big fan favorite in Nashville. Mm-hmm. And then um, he stayed hurt, so they cut him. But they brought him back. Uh, he's been playing for the Bears the last couple of years. Mm. So they cut uh, one of the draft picks from last year to make room for him this morning. Actually, man. So so here we so go. So as of today, it's finalized. It eh? is finalized today. We've got a. Uh, the 53-man roster ready to pack out Nissan Stadium mm-hmm. this Sunday, six days from today, home opener against the Minnesota Vikings. So you going to it? If if uh, what's those saying? If the creek don't rise and uh, <laughs> whatever Johnny Cash said, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, more than likely I'll be there. Yeah. I'd say I'd say there's not. Well, a- how do we look against the Vikings? Mm, the Vikings quarterback just tore his ACL and. Ruptured all other stuff in his knee out one to two years, so they they traded Bring that for, backup quarterback. Then, well, they traded a first round pick, unbelievably a first round pick for Sam Bradford. Uh, I think that we're gonna. I think we have the potential. Minnesota was a playoff team last year. They were a field miss field goal away from the second round. Mm. Uh, so they've got a good team. I don't, mm-hmm. Their defense is pretty stout. Got some young Adrian Peterson, one of the greatest running backs in history. But we'll see. I mean, you just never know what the what's it going to translate. For the Titans, I mean, a lot of new faces. Yeah. Big badass running back core of Derrick Henry and DeMarco Murray. It's looking all sorts of awesome. Marcus, another year progression. Well, uh, you know, something else in NFL, we talked about, uh, I went blank on his name now, tried out for Major League Baseball. I don't know why I can't remember. Oh, Tebow. Tebow. Tim, Tim Tebow. Tried out for the yeah. uh, Major League Baseball. Did you, did you get to watch any of that? I, I didn't, but I read, and they – the two the two reviews I said said it's he sucked and he looked like an actor trying to play baseball. I tell you what he looked like he looked like a football player out there. You know, <laughs> yeah, I have never seen I've never seen a baseball player that big in my life. He, he is, is so big. I didn't know how big he was, but he's out there and uh, he's out there in all his Under Armour gear. I mean, he is jacked, kid. I mean, out there running around, it looked like a big football player out there trying to play. I mean, he don't have that. You know, A Rod look or that Derek Jeter looked where, you know, yeah. kind of look like Babe Ruth a little bit, like they skip the weight training every now and again, yeah. you know, to kind of stay loose a little bit. He was huge, and but he had a, he's got a couple teams interested in The Braves, him. apparently. Yeah. And they, uh, you know, the Braves are big on him. There's two or three other teams. I don't know what names they were on it, but they, um, the there's Bra- some people, some people interested in him. He's so athletic. Yeah. That, I mean, he's going to have, He's gonna do something. It's just hard for me to take that serious when you haven't played. You're 29 or how old? 20? How old is he? 20 what? Uh, 29. Yeah. Yeah, 29. I thought so. Um, and you haven't played baseball since high school, and you think you just come in here and just pick up a bat and make the major leagues? I mean, uh-huh. 
that's a little far-fetched in my opinion, but who am I to say? I mean, I just think he should have changed positions and not been so prideful. And that, That's the only thing that I don't I don't understand is why. If he if he can change sports, why can't he just change positions? Uh, exactly you know? right, man. And I just uh, – I tell you what, the, the Braves better beef up their security if Tebow signs there because Jeff Mackey and Jeremy Mackey will be hanging over that fence. <laughs> Look at him right there. On that baseball sign. Look at that. Look how big he is right there. Who else looks like that before they get on the juice in the – uh, <laughs> yeah, nobody before the juice. <laughs> before the juice, yeah. You, know. you said A-Rod a while ago. It didn't look like he hit the – I was like, oh, well, I mean, it was A-Roid for a few years, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, but he never was that big. No. Uh-uh. Yeah. He's I, just a freak, man. He is. He, I don't, by all by all accounts, such a good guy, too. I, I like, you know, I, I guess where I hadn't been in shape in so long, when I see a dude put together and there's no homo about it, I'm like, damn, that dude's jacked. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So as much as I complained when ESPN run that video of him running around with his shirt off in the rain, I'm like, uh, like I said, it ain't no gay bone in my body, but I was like, damn, that dude is jacked right there, man. Goodness <laughs> gracious. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I'm, I'm guarantee you that everybody everybody was out there watching him was more impressed with how big he was and yeah. how he's running. Now, he's just killing in bases. I'm sure he's got a killer base-to-base time. I don't know what a 90-foot time is compared to like a 40-yard dash, but big kid, man. Oh, well, I, I hope he does good. He's just – he's too good of an athlete. He he would have made such a good back. I, I don't get it, you know. And I think there's worse quarterbacks in the NFL than he, than he is. But yeah, but what, – What the problem is with Tim Tebow is – He brings so much baggage with him. Yeah, well, baggage is in – well, it, it, like the Jets signed him basically for the publicity stunt. Yeah. Because he got so much attention around him. Uh-huh. And is it really that big of a deal the boy prays? That's what that's what pisses me off. Everybody's pre, you know giving all this great attention to Kaepernick for sitting out. That's what hey, that's what he needs to do. If that's what Kaepernick wants to do, good for him. Yeah. All dude was all Tebow done was hunkered down and done his little prayer after he done something good, and people just lost their minds. They're like, yeah. I mean, come on, man. I mean, just because he has a little faith, you know. There's something <clears throat> there's something where people in the United States don't like the good guy. They don't. Yeah. They don't. They don't understand it, or it gives them a it gives them. Like, just too much for too much. Well, not only that, it's like, hey, you know, look at all he's doing, and you know, look at the gaps that I have in my life, and I'm not a, I'm not immune from doing that every now and again, you know. But like him and Daniel Cormier in the uh, UFC, by all accounts, Daniel Cormier is one of the best people in in the world. Such a nice guy, will do anything for you, get in there and tell you what you're doing wrong, help you walk, help you with your wrestling. You know, he's a big D1 wrestler, fantastic wrestling, and he comes out and gets booed every time. That yeah. He gets out there and just claps and, you know, tells everybody how good of a job they've done and everybody in the crowd's booing him. I don't know what it is about a nice guy, but people don't like it. Well, I mean, I know this is kind of off topic, but just watching pro wrestling like I have, yeah. and Hulk Hogan was the – Eat your prayers, say your vitamins. Yeah. Eat your prayers, say your vitamins. <laughs> I wasn't going to say nothing. I liked it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Eat your vitamins, say your prayers, blah, blah, blah. You know, that worked in the 80s. Yeah. It and don't, then by the time these kids that were five and six grew up and they were teenagers, yeah. they weren't feeling that, so they started booing him. It wasn't until he turned into a bad guy. Everybody started cheering him. So they're, they're for, there you go. Yeah. They're cheering the bad guy. Yeah. Stone Cold Steve Austin, same time. Bret Hart was always the good, wholesome you know, yeah. white meat character in wrestling. People yeah. hated him by 1997. Stone yeah. Cold's out there, you know, clanging bear cans together, people give, and birds, yeah. <laughs> telling the boss to kiss his ass, and you know he's he's the biggest popular thing ever had been. Yeah, same thing with present day John Cena. He goes out there and does the old, you know, hey, I'm John Cena, and mm-hmm. people hate it because they're shoved down his throat. And he's such the nice guy. Yeah, but if he'd ever went off and went, did a big rant, they'd love him. Oh yeah. So that that. I mean, that's obviously entertainment, but so the same thing. Everybody's looking at TV like, oh, give it up, man. You know, like, yeah, everybody just don't believe it. I, uh, I believe it. Everybody that talks about him. Well, a girlfriend, a girl broke up with him because he wouldn't have sex with her. Yeah. So pretty legit deal, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's, that's Tim Tebow. I, Most I people get dumped because they're screwing other people. He yeah. won't even, he won't even have sex with her. You know, Conor McGregor is, uh, Conor McGregor's the best showman in the world. You know, he, he'll play the heel, he'll play whatever side, but as soon as it's done, you know, he may have to work himself up to get into the, get ready to fight somebody, but you know, I don't necessarily think he believes that stuff. Right. You know, a lot of time and um uh, but 
I don't know. This is straight up Tim Tebow, and people don't like it. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what it is. I don't either. The only man, thing, man. the only, the only thing I've got bad to say against him was I wish, I just wish he could have lost a little bit of his ego and uh, just took, took a different position. Because if you're going to change sports, uh, it just seems like changing position would have been just the the better way to go. Because you know football, he knows football. I think he's uh, mm-hmm. I think he's not going to make it in baseball for sure. He may be playing some. What's that, third league down <laughs> baseball? If they make a major league three, he's gonna, <laughs> he'll be in a it. Good yeah. star for that. Yeah. So, um, anyway, got to got to see a uh, flash flood in Indiana last weekend. On your uh, way to the concert, the whole trip was like we didn't even check the weather or anything, and well, apparently the whole United States is flooding right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no matter where you go, you got to yeah. run into a flood. Somewhere. I mean, literally, man, it was fine weather from. Um, North Springs, Red Bull and Spring, you know, Gamel, Glasgow, all the way Cave to Indiana. City, and get to Indiana. And I see a Dodge truck just floating on just, a, or floating on water, just floating in a in a parking lot with no other cars around. There's like a car floating through the red light there. <laughs> so I did what any you know white meat good American would do. I Snapchat the video to everybody <laughs> of these people having a bad time. <laughs> yeah, so getting out and helping them. Yeah, and our concert got delayed by an hour and a half. Um, so we, we were told to stay in our vehicles until told otherwise the, through their social media. And then they let us all in, and then 30,000 people tried to go in at one time. All at once. That was, That's ridiculous. That was, hard, that was hardcore right there. What, did that, what happened? The town just flash flooded all at once? Flash flooded, yeah, till 9.50 that night or 9.15 or whatever. And mm-hmm. Dude, I don't know. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I mean, there's, there was people like doing U-turns at red lights like when, with cops. 20 feet from like it wasn't a thing just like hey oh, no screw this turn back around <laughs> I'm going home yeah it, it, it's like a whole other world up there that day it was, it was some weird world I was living in like twilight zone just I mean the people was with us I mean they could, they said the same things like I think they may mention it, it, it are you turns not illegal in this town or what <laughs> and of course I missed like the first two songs of Stapleton You're trying to get in cause trying to get in yeah Looks like they would have uh, told them, hey, uh, we're running behind. Why don't you not start until everybody gets set it down? See, yeah, it was crazy. I said set it down. I just want everybody to know that. It's, <laughs> it's all right. I, I, I you know, the prayer and vitamin still. Probably got you beat. <laughs> yeah. Was good. Hey, man, he was the real deal. I, I've, I've Stapleton was good. I've been waiting, to see, been waiting to see that deal for a while, and I just wouldn't pay the overpriced Nashville prices because everything's jacked in Nashville now. You can't get anything in Nashville cheap. It's going so hipster. Had, oh, Gentrification of Nashville. Yeah. Oh. And so we had to go all the way to Indiana to see it again. But uh, yeah, man, it's a cool show. Uh, he just James James kept saying, you know, I like him, but he he just ain't got nothing you can sing along and party with much. You can't just really get. I'm like, well, it's, it's I, country music. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's just his first album. And, you know, I'm sure he's got some stuff that you could sing. I don't know if yeah. much James has got into him as much, but I mean, I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. you can. A lot of times you just sit there and enjoy. Yeah. Like his wife's a phenomenal singer also. Yeah, I, the, I was literally about to ask you about that. Did she come out there and sing with him any? Yeah, they done a You Are My Sunshine that they've re, uh-huh. redone together. Yeah. And they done that. And, of course, she was she was back up on pretty much all of his songs anyway. So oh, she, really? So she got her time to shine. Yeah. For sure, too. And uh, Now, she's a she's a pretty amazing songwriter, too, isn't she? Yeah, they both are. So yeah, I don't I can't remember what all she wrote, but. Yeah, man, it it didn't disappoint. We had pits. Uh, we were in the pit, mm-hmm. so we were pretty good, pretty close to the stage. There would have been closer had we not been held out in the parking lot, probably. But <laughs> right. it's one of those deals where we drove so far, and Hank Junior's my all-time favorite artist, and I've been waiting so long to see Stapleton. I didn't even want to move, mm-hmm. you know, because they're for because you know how it is at a place like that. As soon as you move, you it's amazing. Ten, your spot. ten people swoop, yeah. swoop in and take your spot. So how about Hank? I don't guess he let you down, did he? Never. He's never let me down in 15 years of seeing him, man. Um, and it's the same concert. Like, I was literally whispering to Derek and Jada that went with us, like, here's what he's going to say next. <laughs> but he's just so entertaining. My favorite part, they said, he said, he sits on this stool and he says, you know, they said, Hank, we, uh, we give you 400000 to come play in do-do New York. And I said, shit, no. <laughs> I ain't playing no New York. I play where I want, when I want, not during turkey season, <laughs> with who I want. So I call Brother Stapleton, you know, and yeah. he's just giving this big old Hank look at me to his speech. Yeah. He's just so awesome. And he's talking about all my rowdy friends are dead, and he sings the Wayland song, and the – Johnny Cash, he does his daddy stuff, and like I said, I, I quote it word for word. Yeah. I've seen him 
shoot, I don't know, man. Probably seven or eight times I've seen Hank now, and just he's just so awesome. How old is Hank now? Sixty-seven. Well, Sixty-seven. Looked right? like he just looked like he forgot his uh, normal country music attire and stopped at Tractor Supply and got the wrestler attire. <laughs> <laughs> he just, it's just man, he's he's just a man in my you, opinion. You know, my old roommate Jason uh, lives in the town that or. Like Hank Williams is from Paris or has a house out in Paris. Something in Paris, yeah. Yeah. And uh hell they they used to just see him in town. You know, he's just Yeah. He was just Hank Williams to them, you know. The uh they used to sing on the radio, but you know, they, they saw him quite a bit whenever they were little. Yeah. I forget what my sister and brother in law said they saw him at in a restaurant somewhere they live of course they could live close to Paris in Murray, Kentucky. Uh huh. Um in Paducah area and all that, and they seen him coming into a diner, and they put him just like in the back of a diner somewhere. Yeah. I'm like, you seen Hank Williams Jr. He didn't speak. Didn't say a word to him. You know, of course, everybody knows how I would have done. <laughs> all right. Yeah, stalked, I, yeah. I seen DK, stalked him for 45 minutes on the way to the restaurant. <laughs> that's, the way, that's the reason yeah. Dustin went to eat at that restaurant. Yeah. He, knew, he knew Hank Williams was going to yeah. be there. <laughs> Probably somebody would say that. Yeah. And, uh, man, I just, if anybody's never seen Hank Williams Jr., Hank Williams Jr. fan, do it, because these legends don't last forever. And oh, yeah. You definitely need to go see that show. And and like I said, he's not drunk. He may be drinking, but he's not drunk. It's, it's got, on the last show when we was talking about me going, yeah. everybody said, well, he changes it up, you know, because uh-huh. he's so drunk. He just changes it up because he's been singing the song, same song for 40 and 50 years. <laughs> it was like 30 years. No, but he has... He has been really drunk on stage. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one song I let you listen to yeah. where he was yeah. all... <laughs> he was hammered. I'm not saying, no, when we were young and before we were... Bo- oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But... Yeah, all, uh, maybe uh, all of his other rowdy friends dying may have yeah. slowed him down a little bit. Yeah, 67, man. It's, uh, it's, everybody just no, he's not he's, as old as I thought he was. Well, it's because he started when he was eight, like yeah. the song says, you know. Mm-hmm. So, he's been around for a long time then. Yeah, 60 years in the business. Yeah. You know what's really amazing to me is everybody talks about how um, how big of an artist Garth Brooks, and I mean, by no means am I saying Garth Brooks is not a great artist, but all these guys that are kind of like a dime a dozen to me uh-huh. now. In 1981, Hank had nine albums on the chart at one time. Whew. I mean, there's there's people that make it in this business for 30 years and don't have nine albums. Yeah. He had nine at once on a on a chart. That's crazy. It's, it's, I mean, I don't even know how it's possible. I mean, nine songs in one year would be ridiculous yeah nine number one singles would be ridiculous and he had nine albums on the chart that's just, crazy and you're telling me the son of a gun can't get in the country music hall of fame Mm-mm-mm. i mean he's not in the country music hall of fame somebody justify that to me mm. i can't believe that you know the uh you bring it up uh, uh I, I don't know if anybody else has a boxer or not this <laughs> this is going off topic i don't know if anybody else has a boxer dog or not <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they will get absolutely insane and just start running around if anybody's got one knows what i'm talking about mine is going insane running dog. around in the floor right now it's like you just slip it dog, dog and adderall that's the craziest saying. thing i've ever seen dude she'll just get into these things where she's spinning around in circles and looking and then gone my boxer is 12 years old and he's he's blind as a bat now <laughs> yeah he probably don't do that anymore does he, he? just know uh-uh he just I bet walks. he used to though didn't he, he yeah he's, he was crazy yeah he but he used to just, he just walks around the, the front porch and Bangs into stuff. Yeah, I just feel so sorry for him. <laughs> that's that's, but then that's he, kind of sad. But yeah, but he still he still gets around and anyway. This dog, dog is oh she's she's went crazy. She's made this about the this right here. She's a six lap around me. She's made right now. She's just running around the table now. Anyway, Garth Brooks, like you were talking about, uh, I absolutely love that guy. I love Garth Brooks. I've got he's I don't carry CDs anymore. The only CD I carry is a Garth Brooks Greatest Hits CD. It's a double CD, and I listen to the crap out of it. Kara got it for me for Christmas. He released that big album, you know, where he was at the wind and he was doing all those other songs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he released a bunch of albums with him and some other people redoing all of it. And his new stuff is not good. No, it's not good. I don't think anything past 1993 has been good for Garth Brooks, other than maybe just one or two songs. He's coming. He's coming to Nashville here pretty soon, and I hope he. I'd really like to go to it, but it's sold out. But you know, the uh, what's not sold out? Yeah, he's. uh, I hope he sings some old songs because his new he will. He will. I went and seen him 2010. He sings anything you want to sing. Yeah, you need to go check it out. We were sitting literally. It was that flood relief shows he done 2010. We were sitting, I mean, pretty much, I was top, touching the top of Bridgestone Arena, <laughs> but man, it don't matter. Yeah. He, he still runs around, even though he's 50 and yeah. out of shape, he'll still run from one side of that stage to the next. Yeah. And just, 
it'll give you your money's worth. Whatever you have to pay for those jacked up inflated StubHub tickets that yeah. you're going to be forced to buy, <laughs> it's worth it, man. Yeah. Just to say you've seen Garth Brooks for sure. We're going to see Carrie Underwood here and uh, <sighs> here pretty soon. Yeah, that's what I said too. <sighs> uh huh. Kara said you just want to see her legs. I said I just yeah. or Mike Fisher's legs. Uh, I don't care which ones they are. <laughs> <sighs> Goodness gracious! Oh shit. My dog is attacked, Dustin. Not as not about fell off the. I lost my shoe. Oh, I lost my shoe. <laughs> well, what else you been doing? What have you been doing today? I, well, heard, I heard you had me, a stressed out day today. Uh, for for a little bit. It, isn't it weird how the most? And this may be may be my just. A, we're not new new together. We've been together for like fifteen years, but the uh, last three and a half or whatever. Married, but isn't it weird how the most innocuous thing you can do will get you into an argument with your wife? Absolutely. I mean, I don't even know what happened today. I'm, I still can't tell you what happened, but I, I'll tell you what I'm. Uh, we were doing. We were painting a baby bed. And Divorce. You, <laughs> I'm not good at painting. She ain't good at painting. We both knew that before we got started painting. I don't know why we thought that was a good idea today. We were going to. You know what I'm good at? I'm good at building stuff. Yeah. You know I'm not good at finishing finish work like <laughs> trim work. Yeah. Painting stuff like that, I'm not good at it. I'm not. I've never been. I'm not going to be, and I don't care. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea today, but by the time it was done, boy, we was we was mad at each other, mad at the world. I don't know why we're having this baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and that was me, not her. She's <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it, I, well, I, I can know. relate. Yeah, they we was up there painting. The paintbrush didn't work. We couldn't paint it on with a paintbrush. We couldn't paint it on with a roller. My spray gun was spraying stuff all over the place. I couldn't spray it. We couldn't get it on there. Well, anybody that knows my wife, God bless her. Uh-huh. Honey, I love you before I say this. The next time she's wrong, it'll be the first time, right? <laughs> yeah. And she she does everything a certain way. And we were actually working on my little half man cave of all the stuff that I've collected for the last few years. Right. Just, I was wanting to build the building. I finally just built it in the house. And it was so bad that I was trying to hang something. Hold on. Here, let me, here, here. Let me do that. And I can't remember if I told it like this on the show that I'm, I'm kind of going back to thinking I did, but she hung a couple things and I was like, well, here's, let me, let me just finish. No, 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 no. Then I was like, well, I want that there. Well, why would you put that there? Why would you put that there? <laughs> uh-huh. I was like, well, it's, it's, it's my stuff. I just want to put it there. It's my, um, no, you're right. You're right. It's yeah, fine. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. So then uh, she come back. She's like, I wouldn't have put that there. <laughs> they don't even look right there. I said, well, yeah, you're right. I was, I'll, I'll change it. I, I mean, my wife is hardcore. Like you gotta walk around yeah. on eggshells because you just <laughs> never know what's going. But I, you know, and I'm the same way. But it's like she'll fuss on Waylon. She'll say Waylon, Waylon, Waylon. I know you hear me. The other night I'm laying on the living room floor and, I, and she's at the kitchen table. And I say, Hey, Lindsay, have you seen? Uh, I don't know. Have you seen my glasses? Uh-huh. Lindsay, you seen my glass? Lindsay. Well, Dustin, if I didn't answer you, I might. I'm probably busy. <laughs> and man, what it? Oh, 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 yeah. I counted to a thousand. Yeah, twice. No. Oh, oh, I can't stand. And them. I said, "Was it? I'm, could you just not t- turn around and said that?" No. I said, uh, "They're in the cabinet, or they're why? Why sit there and ignore me?" Yeah, like a child. You know, if you're mad at me, if you just tell me you're mad and you're not going to answer me because you don't want to talk to me right now, That's, I get it. Hey, I'm fine. I don't want to talk to me sometimes either. I'll let me go. Let me go stand outside. I'll go. I'll go do something else. If I didn't answer you, I'm probably busy. Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah, uh, uh-uh. uh. Looking back, I completely started it. It's my fault. I, I know it is. Not not because it's not because it's always the guy's fault. It's just because it's my fault. You know, it just it just really was. And it was so stupid. It was the most. It was the dumbest thing ever because I couldn't get paint to get on it. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know why we got in a fight on it. But no, it, I. No. It wasn't a fight. It, you be the better. Obviously, obviously, it was like thirty minutes, uh, thirty forty five minutes later. Yeah, we're. Fine. Yeah, maybe I'm so sorry. I don't understand what happened. You know, it's, but well, you know, with me, uh, you're being the better man. Like I legitimately was pretty frustrated. My wife couldn't <laughs> take three seconds around and say, I-, "I don't know," but no, she ignored me for the same thing she fusses on wailing about. <laughs> so don't be a hypocrite at my house, Hamilton, honey. Yeah, at least, unless you know where he got it. Yeah, oh, exactly. And I, I, you know, I, I absolutely hate just I hate it when some if I'm talking to you, ignoring me. Oh God, that, yeah, that gets all over me. It gets under my skin. And you know what? My my wife will do the same thing, but God God forbid me do the same thing that she does. Uh-uh. She say, "Don't that drive you crazy?" Oh, you do the exact same you thing. Did, you did it. No, you didn't. She, but she's got kind of a short term. 
Like, you know, with, with me, I don't want to look at you necessarily. If we're fighting, uh-huh. I try ain't trying to be in the same vicinity as you. Like, I want to get in my truck and probably just ride down the road just from there. Just go, go away for a little bit. Or I just want to – If I, I just – the thing is, me and Lindsay both have got to get that last word sometimes. Because uh-huh. I'll be walking – I'm like, you know what? You're right. You're right. And I walk up the bedroom and say, share her. You know, I'm mumbling and I'm walking, <laughs> yeah. what? Do what? So here we go. Starts again. Yeah. So, but like, Lindsay's pretty, she forgets it pretty relatively quick. Like, we can. Oh, yeah, like a goldfish. Ain't that the craziest thing you've ever seen? I don't yeah. know how they do it. it just, I remember one time we were we were in an argument about something that, uh, when we lived in Cookville. And like, I was just heated, son. Mm-hmm. We went in the garage, just cussing, you know, just matter and fire all to myself. She come in there like 20 minutes later. Hey, you want to go to Walmart? I said, were you in the same house I was in 20 minutes ago? No, I don't want to go to Walmart, yeah. but I do need some stuff. Yeah. You know. Yes, I want to go to Walmart, but not with you. Not with you. <laughs> no. Will you drive? Can you, will you drive? I ain't got any gas in my truck. <laughs> I just, I, I, I wonder how many people are listening to this, but like, maybe I shouldn't get married. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's well worth it. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody puts up with me, I, I well, I mean, uh, yeah, she she's doing pretty well. Putting oh her yeah, she's doing really well. But. At the same time, can a man get a little credit around here? Because <laughs> those Hamiltons are hard to break. Sometimes it's hard to figure out. So yeah, I, I think that's a losing battle. That's like that's any woman really. Yeah, trying to break a Palomino, buddy. It ain't it ain't gonna stick. No, I give the Hamiltons a hard time, but because they deserve it. And uh, <laughs> but they are man. I swear, I love them to death. I love that. Family. I really do yeah. like the family a whole lot. But I tell you what, there's three or four of them that there ain't but three or four of them. I'm talking about the whole crew. Oh. <laughs> you might talk to them one time, they'll talk your head off, and you come back the next time, they don't act they like you. They know you. You act like you ain't been in the family 10 years. <laughs> and every one of them that does that have vaginas, <laughs> it ain't none of the men. Yeah. James going, yeah. 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 I ain't saying nothing about this to nobody, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> James, right. he's a pretty good old dude. Yeah. He's like that sometimes. He, sometimes he'll talk your head off, sometimes he don't speak as much. But yeah. all the women in the family are... They're, they're tuned a little different sometimes. I love them all. They're yeah. just tuned different. Hey, speaking of uh, something crazy, hmm. uh, SETI. You ever heard of SETI? Uh, I haven't. Search The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Yeah. It's a I'm government-funded organization. Out there, they're just listening to the stars, right? Okay. 2015, they hadn't let it out yet. They hadn't, they hadn't let much of it out until re- really recently. So you may have seen this on uh, back last week or the week before. It it was a blip on the MSN or Yahoo radar. You know, it just one of the news things that morning. So I'm I'm kind of I'm not I'm not big in extraterrestrials or anything. I don't believe in I don't necessarily believe in little green men running around and probing people or anything like that. But I like to stay up on the science news, you know. So yeah. I, I always thought NASA was cool. So I this is just kind of one of the things that kind of fit in my wheelhouse. So they found a. They found a signal coming to them, coming towards us out in space, that could be from a civilization somewhere else. Now we're going okay. So could be, is, and how far away is this? If it's, is it something we're going to see ever? No, we're man, you'll never know what. We'll never see what it. happens from this. It's ninety-five light years away. That's th- uh, six trillion miles in a light year. Okay, so that's. Uh, you said how many light years? 95. That's 570 trillion miles away. Oh, yeah. It's a little little distance. It's out there. It's out there. Yeah, it, we're not getting to it. We're not going to get to it anytime soon. So we're not going to know what... No, we're not going to know what comes from this. I wouldn't think... I would but, imagine that they're going to look like a bunch of Josh Dobbses. <laughs> <laughs> and, Sam, and Sam Cassells. Remember Sam Cassell? <laughs> yeah. The, uh, so let me tell you what's interesting about this. So this very well could be... This could be a star dying that's put this out. This could be a uh well most likely if it's anything it's a star dying. If it's not if it's not a beam from uh you know if it's not some kind of signal from other some other civilization out there somewhere. This is most likely a star dying that we didn't mm-hmm. know. About. So let's go ahead and get it out of the way that's most likely what it is. But there's well, some yeah. there's some theories, okay? So there's some real neat theories then in physics and and astrophysics and stuff that uh this could explain they could explain this there's one that's uh we're a kardashev one society civilization we couldn't produce this signal and send it out everywhere 
so what the theory is around this is if if this is a civilization that's made a that's just broadcasting this out to whoever if it's just sending out in all directions if they've been able to send a signal out just looking for life someplace else and we're able to send it out in all directions then this would be from a dyson sphere okay okay so a dyson sphere this big would encompass the earth's rotation around the sun it would have to be that big and it would have to be about 10 foot the walls would have to be about 10 foot thick so think of an antenna that's so big that it encompasses the rotation around the sun of the earth it, it, it's ridiculous to think about right i believe this is happening it, i don't believe it's a star dying i i don't know you know it's it's fun to think about, right? So this is like first contact. Remember that Jodie Foster movie, yeah. Contact? So this hey. is something like that, right? Honest to God, when I used to watch Unsolved Mysteries late at night with that creepy old bastard, that, I forget his name. Uh, you remember the Unsolved uh, Mysteries guy? Yeah. Um, that had that voice. I don't know why I can't think of his name right now. And I would watch it when mom and dad went to bed, yeah. you know, because it always come on late night, whatever channel it came on. And the scaredest I got was when they used to talk about UFOs because they made that stuff seem so real. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah, so this is happening. If Lucas. if if that was the case, and so this is all hypothesis, and you know, and and again, I'm not, I, I'm just telling you what the theories are. It's out there. So if that's the case, then this is a Kardashev type two uh, society, which is well, way far beyond our our civilization at this point in time. Now, if if it's a, a if it's something like ours, so we could put we could put together a we could put together a signal that would just go in one direction, one unidirectional, mm -hmm. and get to this, you know, and send it towards that place. But the the thought would be the the neat thought is if it's a society that's uh, advanced far enough that they could send it out in all directions, so mm -hmm. just looking for whatever. So that that's kind of the neat thing that they're that they're talking about around it. And I only bring this up because it was something that blipped my radar and I thought it was neat. And if anybody was out there wondering about what, you know, they was talking a lot about a Dyson sphere and all that stuff. And so I just thought I'd clear that up a little bit for everybody that if they did happen to see it, but low and my gut feeling is this is a star dying out in the middle of some killing galaxy out there. <laughs> You're killing uh, me. The, uh, you know, if it's out there, it's out there, but that, you know, there's, I, I I don't know. I, my my gut feeling is there's just there's a star dying that's throwing off some real neat uh, real neat signal out through there. But hey, man, all you people out there in Nevada that's looking up out there to Area 51 and looking up at the stars and stuff. Hey, this is your uh, this is your first first official first official shot at yeah. there being something out there. I you know I'm not I'm not I'm not against the fact that it, it's a real thing and like you know people. You know, people will fight you about ghosts. People will believe in ghosts oh, yeah. and unicorns, and yeah. <laughs> there's people out there that said dinosaurs didn't exist because nobody's ever really seen them. Oh well, yeah, pretty positive dinosaurs. I'm, I, I'm pretty positive somebody didn't just bury a bunch of, <laughs> make a bunch of bones and bury them and look yeah. at them. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure they existed, but the, uh, I don't know, man. This was, uh, as far as, uh, as far as whether we'll ever know anything about this. If this is the first time you heard it, this will probably be the last time you ever hear about it because mm -hmm. isn't it probably there will be nothing to ever come of this in our lifetime. But I hope that there's nobody. I don't really get. I don't really know anybody that actively does this, but I I can imagine somebody is on our show listening to acid right now. <laughs> You're talking about UFOs yeah. and aliens, and they're just probably out. mind blown right now. Yeah, they're out there with them right now. They're just, <laughs> <laughs> just on a different planet looking at us right there's, now. There's somebody that's ate a thing of shrooms before they listen to this podcast. Just smoked they're, a big bunch of DMT, and they're just <laughs> sitting out there. So they're just now talking about you, talking to the aliens <laughs> right now. Hell, I know. I knew that Lucas was on some stuff. I knew man. he was out there, man. Uh, I don't know, man. That's neat to think about. They, uh, it's interesting stuff. It's man. interesting. You know, I, as far as that goes, it kind of goes back to those thriller horror movies and we talked about earlier it's kind of some independence day but I, it's yeah. more like mars attacks uh, <laughs> you know oh man hey you never know you never know crazy crazy things can happen there's though. your science minute there we're 21 episodes in and there's your science <laughs> minute for it we will that's yeah Sci no scientology though. yeah yeah scientology minute yeah now all i need all y'all to do is send me 500 dollars after that <laughs> <laughs> and, and we'll uh we'll join the scientology church you know what i seen it was coming out with i 
just made uh, seen it on Facebook earlier. It made me uh, remember what they're uh, they're recreating the original Nintendo in a smaller in a smaller console for Christmas. Are they sent? Can you reuse all your old games? Because I've got I've got a <laughs> copy of Super Mario that I've been well, I, I've been trying to blow in for the last twenty years trying to get it to work. I just, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know frustration until you've blown into Super Mario Brothers three. So you're slapping the top of that stupid Nintendo, yeah. trying to get it to go. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to get it to go. That was it, man. I done the same thing with a uh, Sega disc after that too. <laughs> yeah, it never did work on Sega. Nah, I don't know. It didn't. It didn't have the same trick to it. Man. But, uh, yeah, you're, I think it's gonna have a. Uh, this is this is a one shot deal. They're not bringing it, like individual games. It's like thirty games preloaded onto this system for like under a hundred bucks. I oh, mean, I've got to get one. That sounds m- more fun than anything. Yeah. I- all the Mario's, uh, Punch Out. Uh, I tell you what, all I could, of it. I tell you what, I'll do. I will ruin some Super Mario or some Mario Brothers. Yeah. I tell you what, I can't do. I can't play Call of Duty. I can't. Um, that shit's way too advanced. It's man. too. It's too much for me. I can't keep up with it on the screen. My TV was too big. I couldn't see right and left. I couldn't. I couldn't keep up with the whole screen. Mm-hmm. My TV ain't even that big. But I was playing with Jace and Derek and some other boys on there. I couldn't keep up with it. I can't do it. Uh, Waylon loves me to play Call of Duty. Like he he doesn't want he don't he don't want none on Madden and Two K. Okay, he'll yeah. talk trash like yeah. three you quarters. Can't keep up with some DK on some Madden. He, yeah, and he's like, "Daddy, how you so good?" I was like, "Son, I was playing NBA Live '95 Sega Genesis." Okay, <laughs> I was NBA Jam Tournament Edition King. Kid. Yeah, yeah. So get some. Yeah. So he's like running his mouth. He's like, "Ooh, if I could the first three and a half quarters." Yeah. Then old Daddy DK makes the comeback in the fourth quarter, and I'm just leaving it hanging. I got it extended, you know. <laughs> just, I'm popping threes. Yeah, stupid, stupid. You're game. stupid. I'll dude. ruin the dreams of a nine year old on oh, PlayStation. Yeah. I don't mess around. <laughs> yeah. But when I get this Sega, I tell you who I'm not gonna let play. My sister, or when I get the Nintendo. Oh yeah. Have I ever told you this story about uh, my she sister? A controller thrower. No, what happened was my sister, obviously nine years older than me. Yeah. The first Nintendo comes out. We're sitting in the old White House, Emma Bell's old house. We live mm-hmm. live there still. She's playing, got like 30 extra men, right, yeah. saved up. Sis, can I play? Little 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 six-year-old DK. Uh-huh. You know. Sweet little never DK. Never hurt nobody. Never hurt nobody. Sweet innocent little kid. Sis, let me play. Let rat me tail play. Rat tail and all. I ain't never had no rat tail. I had, to, I had the lines cut out of my hair like vanilla eyes with a fringe jacket. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Denim jacket with the, with the fringes. Hell yeah. With the lines. Uh-huh. Shit. Mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she and I said, "Come on, no, I'll, I'll in a minute, uh-huh. in a minute. Uh-huh. You got a bunch of extra men, says let me play in a minute. All you know, my mom's in there like let him play, you know, yeah. and uh, you know, not letting me play. Finally, you know, this is before the days of memory cards and save progress. I went boop power <laughs> off. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god!" I was eating a can of ABCs and one, two, threes on the kitchen table. My sister, being the jerk she was, took the bowl of SpaghettiOs, dumped it all over my head. <laughs> Burning hot, third degree. Got a seven on my titty. Running uh-huh. down my, got an ABC on my cheekbone. <laughs> so my mom said, what the hell did you do to him? Well, she come out of that chair and BT breaks off my sister. Like, you know, if DCS could have seen us in 1989, right? Oh, yeah. And the story got bigger. Like, she really just, like, my sister is, like, such a pushover. Yeah. Like, she just saw mama coming with the thunder. She just, like, flopped like LeBron down, on the yeah. ground. And my <laughs> yeah, mom just kind of stood over and yeah. give her the what for. But, like, years later, we tell mom, man, you used to beat Vivi, and I remember, so I ain't fooling oh, you. Yeah. You know, you had that, you know, you had that. Never touched you, her. you beat her with that pan in the leg three or four times, and you had that chair on her throat. And, you know, the story got ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. By the time mama passed away last year, we were still joking about it up till, you know, as she was getting sick, we would still bring that up. And I was like, you know how I know I'm the only child? I ain't never had a chair on my throat. <laughs> <You know? laughs> my favorite child. the yeah. only child, I think. Uh, Miss Quote was crapping myself today, but uh, I, you know what? I'm excited to see. I want to see. Uh, I want to see Cucumber get up here and you and him play some video games. I used to walk in on y'all playing some PlayStation video games. Y'all just getting wild, throwing controllers and shit at your, at your apartment. <laughs> That's bad, man. Because I fuss on Waylon now, like because he will throw a controller and. You don't think about oh, it. Oh, that's in that's in his blood right <laughs> yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, I'm such a hypocrite, I guess, because I'm like, that is a sixty. Uh, I'm the dad now, you know. That's, that's a sixty dollar controller, son. Uh-huh. He's over like stupid, stupid, stupid. And I just can't. I was like, maybe it's operator. You know, <laughs> I talk junk to my nine year old. Uh huh. Hmm. So ain't it funny how things go around? Did I see Cucumber's dad when you text me that? Oh yeah, old Carl sporting OLR podcast. Koozie. The koozie. That's uh-huh. right. 
That's right. We need to get him a T-shirt. He said he wanted a sticker. Yes, yeah, so he right? wanted a sticker to throw on the old uh, refrigerator. I think we need to do that. Surely we can get somebody where we don't have to too much effort to make a sticker. Surely I don't. I, th- I think probably I think it's probably pretty easy. We've already got all the all the pictures and everything. Yeah, yeah. So we can get uh, Carl down here. I man, I wouldn't that, it be fun to have Carl on? <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Yeah, and not uh, Josh got quit messing around. I'm getting tired of these little text messages just teasing us, showing him him and the OLR shirt and Carl and the koozie and. Hey, I'm ready for uh, I'm road. ready for cucumber to come in. I know. I know he's busy. I know he's got that new job down here in Nashville, and uh, I know he's working on that house he's staying in. But uh, I'm about tired of any of these excuses. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I don't even. I'm. I'm over it. I'm not listening to him. I'm accepting excuses at this time. Uh-uh, all I'm accepting uh, is invitations right now. That's right. Um, I think he knows the route down here. Um, I'll meet you in Mount Juliet. We'll go. We'll come to Mount Juliet. Yeah. That I'll, may not be halfway, but I'm, I'll meet you in Mount Juliet. Yeah. I'll yeah. come to Nashville. Yeah, and I'm never have to have an excuse to go to nashville so <laughs> that's right so we need to we need to do that it's hey we would just give me a hard time it was this is almost two weeks since we recorded it feels like two weeks it's it, the labor day edition yeah so this is a labor day edition we took uh last wednesday off uh guess what i had something with work pop up and didn't get to make it on wednesday. i'm about sick of that job because <laughs> i'm all zoomed like, like at the time i was like oh man we got this oh Titans yeah we got talk. this we got, we got that we got it's gonna Ka- be a great Ka- acting the fool you know sturgill we didn't even talk about sturgill we'll do, yeah well, that's that's something we'll look over now but you know, i was so fired up lucas just give me the old i got work tuesday i got i said okay. i'm not gonna be able to make it tomorrow dustin <laughs> and i was like i had some i mean all weekend we had stuff going on friday and saturday uh-huh and as you did too and so then, like, you misunderstood that text. And I, I, I was trying to draft. Uh, basically, what I threw out to Lucas yesterday was, was to have, uh, we're doing my football, you know, football fantasy draft. Football, yeah. And I was like, we're doing it now at the spot. I said, let's, let's come broadcast live from the spot. I didn't understand it. Well, looking back at it, I get why you didn't understand it. Uh, I text yesterday like I talked today, and <laughs> right. it didn't make any sense for some reason. <laughs> when I, I had a word backwards or yeah. something there. Well, so there were some pretty colorful personalities down there that made for a good live yeah, you know, broadcast. Who all was in your? Who all was in your Facebook? Oh, uh, let's see. It's it's uh myself and Mackie. Who Mackie was on vacation, so he called in from Florida every pick, which mm-hmm. always sucks. People have to do that. Matt Chapman had to do the same thing. Uh, Drew McMillan, uh, John Godwin, uh, James Hatcher, uh, Curtis Curtis Rich. No, Curtis Hatcher didn't play. Curtis Rich played. Um, Jordan Godwin. Um, John is that John's brother? Yeah. Oh, uh, crap, man. I'm, I'm forgetting like four people. Uh, sorry, guys. Sunshine, my boy Sunshine. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I, well, I, I ain't I, seen Sunshine in a while. Blake Allen, Matt Mayberry played. And God, God forbid me to left Blake Allen's name out. He would have been <laughs> completely uh, butthurt about it. But, uh, yeah, man, it's uh, Derek Rich is the last one, I think. Yeah. Derek's the last uh, player we got. So, I, uh yeah, I feel like I did pretty good. Hey, I'm gonna read my team off just yeah, real quick. It. I'm gonna read. I want, I want feedback from everybody. Um, Aaron Rodgers, Antonio Brown, Michael Floyd, Tajay Sharp, Mark Ingram, Matt Forte, Greg Olson, Derek Henry, um, Guskowski, the kicker for New England, Rams defense, Emmanuel Sanders, Isaiah Crowd, DGB, Tyrod Taylor, and Laquan Treadwell. Let me know you fancy football gurus because I have not studied one bit. Everybody called me a, a homer, Titans homer for getting Derek Henry in. Tajay Sharp, but I think Henry's going to get a lot of touches, a lot of touchdowns. I think Tajay Sharp's going to be Marcus's favorite target coming out early. So uh, I didn't take him early, uh, eighth, ninth round before I take the, took those guys. So uh, we give the Mackies a hard time because they're always homers about the Titans drafting <laughs> right. four or five. But hey, man, I think they got some good qual- quality fantasy options mm. for the first time in a long time. But yeah, we got together. It's always a good time. Yeah. You get together, everybody. and Yeah. I was uh, so confused on the days. I I just I didn't get it. That you asked me to play, but I was just so afraid that I'd be that. I, I don't know anything about sports, so I'd have drafted all the wrong people, and I'd have been the guy that everybody everybody's team wanted to play all yeah. <laughs> all year. Uh, well, we tried to make this one pretty competitive this year, and had you played, we, we you know you'd have had to have steered me in the right direction. Well, we would have, but we wouldn't have minded because right. every year it seemed like there's been one right. or two that hadn't played, and we wouldn't have cared a bit, and then. Overall, I mean, yeah, I just named a couple of douchebags, but uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Nobody's a douchebag. Yeah. Maybe. But uh, everybody's pretty cool yeah. about it. And, uh, you know, we would have worked with you. But yeah. I tell you what, there's always been, though, in that every year there's like one or two that 
even guys that know what they're doing, they they draft with their heart more right. than their head, and then they'll overreact and make trades and stuff. So you always want to play their teams. Right. It seems like, but man, we've got like twelve, I think, pretty good guys that should be a pretty competitive league. Know the know the game, you know. Yeah, and we'll see. But I felt pretty good about my top. We picked anywhere we wanted to, and I took number one pick because just because honestly, because I hadn't studied enough. Right. I know everybody and their brother says take Antonio Brown first because uh-huh. wide receivers are going first. So I, I said went for it. I'm not drafting six, seven, five, whatever. I'm going first, so uh-huh. I'll know exactly who to get. And people don't pick uh, quarterbacks early, but I took Aaron Rodgers my second pick. Hammer played with you one year, didn't he? We played fantasy basketball it uh, years ago. Yeah, yeah. I just I. I I can't get into it. I yeah. I couldn't ever give it, give it the time it would require to not be just a dog. Yeah. Don Asbury won't play because he played one year and he was like obsessed with it. He was up three o'clock in the morning looking at stats <laughs> and yeah. he won. I mean, he got yeah. the money for it that year. But I've played of only won two leagues ever. Uh-huh. They were in the same year, like four years ago. Ever. There's a lot of time involved in it. It is. I mean, it's a lot of luck too. Yeah. Because you can, you can, you kind of live and die by the way the guy's feeling that day, right? Yeah. I mean. You can, you can, Yahoo gives you a minus, then guy goes out and breaks his leg week two. You're kind of screwed on that number one pick <laughs> yeah. you just made. So it is fun. It's kind of addicting, but uh, I hate when I hate being around fans when they're around players like, oh, I got you on my fancy team now. Come Ooh, on now. That's a, that's, There's nothing a player wants to hear less. Oh, gosh. Than that. I promise you. Yeah, that's that guy. Oh, yeah. Don't, that's don't be, a, the, don't be, don't that, be guy. that guy. Oh my God! Now I p- I picked you. You better do me some I got, good. I got thirty dollars riding on this leg, bang guy. You you need to start running the ball a little better. <laughs> oh man, I couldn't you, you imagine that. if he's a player. Oh uh, yeah, goodness. I bet they hear it all the time. Well, you got anything to end the show on? No, Just, uh, I sure don't. I sure don't, man. That was uh that was a good one. I I uh, glad to be back in the saddle again. You know, we took a little time off there. Got a little. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome back. back. I hope y'all like the welcome back, Carter. Song yeah, uh, there's 96 percent of the people are not going to get that reference <laughs> from the start, but we're old heads yeah. in here. So there you go. All right, man. We'll talk to you guys next week. See you, everybody.